what I've found, especially with lips, is that sometimes it's a small tweak that changes everything in your procedure. And I've been doing cosmetic tattooing now since 2006. And I've found, and I've tried so many different techniques, so many different products, so many different uh, machines. Like I have so many of them. And um, the, the tips that I'm going to give you in the next hour or so, hour and a half, is I, it will really amplify and speed up your service as well as uh, your clients having really good healed results and the procedure being less uh, uh, painful um, and just an overall easier experience. I find that a lot of clients, when following the correct aftercare, as well as uh, the techniques that I'm going to I'm show you what I do, um, they it's actually easier than having your brows done. So that's the goal. So, and again, my goal is that this really uh, speeds up your current lip procedure service, and we're focused mainly on blush lips here. So that's that really pretty, like, soft um like, look, I, that's basically what I have. I never have to wear anything. I love it. And um, just that really pretty soft, like, almost like little kid lips, you know, where they're perfectly defined, not a strong contour. And um, it's, it's pretty much what everyone's wanting right now. Anyway. Okay. So let's get into it. So first things first, we, we definitely do, we start with a consult just to see what is, this is a correct procedure that your client is wanting. And a lot of times they, they'll show you pictures. And what I do when I'm consulting with a client as far as their color, I'll, I'll have them show me pictures of how they want their, their lips to heal. Because that's, that's really important because pink could mean something completely different or nude could mean something completely different. So I want to see how they want their, their lips to heal. And from there, depending on the amount of natural lip pigment they have, and they could have a little sun damage, they could have uh, really dark lips, they could have no pigment at all, which are the easiest to work on, uh, then from, or two different tones in their lips, which is also fairly common. Then from there, I'll choose the color. So someone who wants, like say, say I don't know how well you guys can see it, but um, I just have the soft blushy color. So someone who wants that color in their lip, I will look at their natural lip color. And if they have a, a really dark lip, then I'll choose something different to get the same result as somebody who has a really light. So that's important. So I always look at pictures and then I determine which color I'm going to use from there. So you, it's not one size fits all when it comes to selecting the pigment. Okay. So then let's talk about the design. I love the lip mapping technique. And this is so important for finding your client's perfect shape for their face. Because uh, you, can, you can draw in and... Um, design a, a lip, but when you're using like straight lines, as we're using here with the, the thread and the white pigment, you're going to get like the perfect symmetry and this, and really be able to sculpt your client's lip. So, um, all right, I'm hoping so, are some of you know how to do this already. Um, maybe, maybe not, but it's, it's fairly easy and it's one of the most efficient ways to create that perfect symmetry for your client. Very, very, very time-saving. It's very quick. Sometimes I can do it within minutes. Sometimes it takes a little longer. And I'll just use a Q-tip with a little like uh, hand sanitizer or green soap on the end to just clean up any designs as well as the white pigment and our, and our white pencil. So those are, I mean, I can do it within, I mean, five, maybe 10 minutes. And um, and then it allows, and then I fill in the whole lip using pigment. You always want to use anything that's going to be skin safe for your client. So I know there's a lot of like lip, like makeup pencils and things like that. The problem with that is like, we're going to be opening your client's skin and we need to make sure that whatever we're using on your client's skin and, and that's going to enter into their bloodstream is safe always. So know where, where your products come from, what the ingredients are, and if they're safe. So that's why we use our pigment to map with. Um, and this, and when you fill in the whole lip, not just the outline, your client can really see what the shape is going to look like. And especially when you have all the lines there, you can see the symmetry. Here, and most of the time, I will use Dior, our pigment. You can really use any color to 
uh, any pigment color to map with. I like Dior because it's bright. You can see it. They can see it. They're always going to ask you, is this the color? And like, no. I mean, sometimes maybe. But th this way they can really see what the, the color is going to be. And I'd like to use something opposite of what I'm going to be tattooing into their skin. So say I'm going to use Pucci, which is a very light pink. It's It's very you can see the contrast between the two. So as you're creating your contour line, it's easier to see so you don't lose what your design as you're going around. Um, this method, which I'll show you a, a quick video, is so efficient, so, again, so time-saving, which is gonna speed up your treatment. And um, it really enhances your client's natural lips. Um, and there's, there's several other techniques out there, too. So you can see by finding the different points on your lip, the cupid's bow, um, right down the center, and then outlining with the pigment. Now, here's like one of the most important time-saving tips. So you can mix in with the pigment like some um, like aftercare balm or something to get the pigment to spread really evenly and not dry out. So this is, this is a tip that uh, I think you should definitely try. Mix in a little pre-numbering with it. And so what happens is it's going to get your client numbing right away, right from the beginning, and it's going to save you so much time. So they're going to start to feel their lips go really numb. I've been doing this, and it's been speeding up my procedure probably by 15, 20 minutes or so. So again, what you're doing is you're mixing in a, a drop of Zensa pre-numbing with your pigment, just in a little dish, and then your and I use I use a micro brush here, just to to uh, draw the pigment on, and it goes over nicely. And then your client's already beginning to numb, and it keeps them like a, a moist, I guess. So so the pigment doesn't dry out on your client's skin, and they've already started the numbing process. So say you do take you know. You don't, so another way that people have done it is they numb for 20 minutes or so before with a pre-number and, and then they draw. And now once you start doing that, then your client already starts to unnumb. So this is a very important like tip that I highly recommend trying. Mix in pre-numbing, I, I like Zensa. Um, depending on the state that you're in, you can use um, Things are a little higher than 5% because it's the lip area, but Zensa works amazing. That is, again, one of the things that really kind of changed my my service was mixing in pre -numbing. It's like, it was almost like one of those like um, mind blown moments where I'm like, oh my God, how have I not been doing this already? So clients are beginning the numbing process and even once you're done with the pre -numbing, or the pre-draw, you take a photo, you show it to your, to your client, and once once they see all the lines and um, the symmetry, because it'll show, the straight lines always show symmetry. So that's why it's important to do the lip mapping method. And they can see it with that outline of the, you know, when it's like, it looks like this bright red color on their lip. And, and then they're already starting the numbing process, then you can set up and start. So again, time saver and your client doesn't begin to unknown.